Kitai go pre manande hari hari bo Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Narayanam namaskritya Naram chaiva narottamam Devim sarasutim vyasam Tato jaya mudiraye Today we're reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, our perpetual reading. If you read one verse a day, you'll complete the whole Bhagavatam in 51 years. Which is nice. Today's verse is the second canto, first chapter, and the verse is number 39. It's the last verse. Sasarva divrityanu bhuta sarva. Atma yatha swapna janikshitaika. Atma yatha swapna janikshitaika. Tang satyam ananda nidhim vajeta. Nan yatra sajje yata atma pata. Sarva hi vrityanu bhuta sarva. Atma yata swapna janik shitaika. Tam satyam ananda nidhim vajeta. Nan yatra sajjet yata atma pata. Sasarva hi vrityanu bhuta sarva. Atma yata swapna janik shitaika. Tang satyam ananda nidhim vajeta. Nan yatra sajjet yata atma pata. The Sarva Divrit Janu Bhutta Sarva Vaishnavis, Atma Yata Swatna Janichi Taika. Tam Satya Mananda Nidhim Bhujeta. Nam yat rasa jed yata atma pata. 
He, the Supreme Person, Sarvadhi Vritti, the process of realization by all sorts of intelligence, Anubhuta, cognizant, Sarve, everyone, Atma, the Super Soul, Yatha, as much as Swapna Jana. A person dreaming, ikshita, seen by, eka, one and the same, tum, unto him, satyam, the supreme truth, ananda nidhim, the ocean of bliss, bhajeta, must one worship, na, never, anyatra, Anything else, Anything else. Sajjate. Sajjate. be attached, be attached. yataha, yataha. whereby, whereby. Atmapata. atmapata, degradation of oneself. Translation, one should concentrate his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who alone distributes himself in so many manifestations, just as ordinary persons create thousands of manifestations in dreams. One must concentrate the mind on Him, the only all-blissful Absolute Truth. Otherwise, one will be misled and will cause his own degradation. Purport by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. In this verse, the process of devotional service is indicated by the great Goswami Srila Shukadev. He tries to impress upon us that instead of diverting our attention to several branches of self-realization, we should concentrate upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the supreme object of realization, worship and devotion. Self-realization is, as it were, offering a fight for eternal life against the material struggle of existence, and therefore by the illusory grace of the external energy, the yogi or devotee is faced with many allurements which can entangle a great fighter again in the bondage of material existence. A yogi can attain miraculous successes in material achievements, such as anima and lagima, by which one can become more minute than the minutest or lighter than the lightest, or in the ordinary sense, one may achieve material benedictions in the shape of wealth and women. But one is warned against such allurements because Entanglement again in such illusory pleasure means degradation of the self and further imprisonment in the material world. By this warning, one should follow one's vigilant intelligence only. The Supreme Lord is one and His expansions are various. He is therefore the super soul of everything. When a man sees anything, he must know that he is seeing secondary... He must know... When a man sees anything, he must know that his seeing is secondary and the Lord's seeing is primary. One cannot see anything without the Lord's having seen it. For, seen it. That is the instruction of the Vedas and Upanishads. So whatever we see or do, the super soul of all acts... Mm. So whatever we see or do, the super soul of all acts of seeing or doing is the Lord. This theory of simultaneous oneness and difference between the individual soul and the super soul is propounded by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the philosophy of Achintya Bedabhida Tattva. The Virat Rupa, or the gigantic feature of the Supreme Lord, includes everything materially manifested, and therefore the Virat, or gigantic feature of the Lord, is the super soul of all living and non living entities. But the Virat Rupa is also the manifestation of Narayan or Vishnu. 
and going further on and on, one will eventually see that Lord Krishna is the ultimate super soul of everything that be. The conclusion is that one should unhesitatingly become a worshipper of Lord Krishna, or for that matter, his plenary expansion Narayan, and none else. In the Vedic hymns, it is clearly said that first of all, Narayan cast a glance of over matter, and thus there was creation. Before creation, there was neither Brahma nor Shiva, and what to speak of others. Sripad Shankaracharya has definitely accepted this, that Narayan is beyond the material creation, and that all others are within the material creation. The whole material creation, therefore, is one with and different from Narayan simultaneously, and this supports the Achinta Bidabhida Tattva philosophy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Being an emanation from the glancing potency of Narayan, the whole material creation is non-different from him. But because it is the effect of his external energy, Bahiranga Maya, and is aloof from the internal potency, Atma Maya, the whole material creation is different from him at the same time. The example given in this verse very nice. The example given in this verse very nicely is that of a dreaming man. The dreaming man creates many things in his dream, and thus he himself becomes the entangled seer of the dream and is also affected by the consequences. This material creation is also exactly a dreamlike creation of the Lord, but he, being the transcendental supersoul, is neither entangled nor affected by the reactions of such a dreamlike creation. He is always in his transcendental position, but essentially he is everything and nothing is apart from him. As a part of him, one should therefore concentrate on him only without deviation. Otherwise, one is sure to be overcome by the potencies of the material creation one after another. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 9.7 as follows. Sarvabhutani kaunteya O Son of Kunti, at the end of the millennium, every material manifestation enters into my nature, and at the beginning of another millennium, by my potency, I again create. The human life, however, is an opportunity to get out of this repetition of creation and annihilation. It is a means whereby one may escape the Lord's external potency and enter into his internal potency. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the second canto, first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, The First Step in God Realization. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Nilitam Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadakmayam Tadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadvatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhadu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kolpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha Patitanam Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha 
Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasa Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Go Premanandi Hare Hare Bo It's a great honor to join in the perpetual reading of the Bhagavatam here in this august assembly. So everywhere I look, I see all my favorite devotees from all parts of the world. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, everyone, for keeping the vibration of the Bhagavatam going at such a high level here in Alachua for all that you're doing. Hare Krishna. So, in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the word dhi, which means uh, in dhimahi, which means to meditate upon, is invoked, as it is in the Gayatri Mantra. And, of course, the Srimad Bhagavatam is an explanation of the Vedanta Sutra, and also of the Gayatri Mantra, which points towards our ultimate good in life. And in this verse, we have parallels to many of the verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which are very practical. And that is, in summary, that there is an object of our gaze which will actually satisfy us. And there are many ways in which we may focus our attention or wander in our purview of the material world which will feel frustrated. The Sri Upanishad says Anyadeva Hur Sambhavad, Anyadahur Asambhavat, Iti Shushumadhiranam Yenas Tad Vichakshire. The wise have explained that one result is obtained by worshipping the supreme cause of all causes, and then another result is obtained by worshipping that which is not supreme. That's fairly straightforward. And it indicates that a person should be thoughtful in where he or she places his or her attention. Uh, The word worship actually originally means, it comes from the word worth. That is uh, what what value something has. What is its worth? And then when you add ship to a word, it makes it into a noun. And over time, there's a tendency in language for vowels to become easier to pronounce is because of uh, convenience and therefore the word worship has become worship. Basically it means uh, what do you find of value? In fact, we naturally vote with our attention. We'll place our attention where we think we're going to get the most uh, return. It's quite natural. Because when I'm affected by the three modes of material nature, those uh, modalities will dictate to me that, for instance, in the mode of ignorance, I might find happiness and intoxication. In the mode of passion, I might focus my attention on working very hard and building up a nest egg because then I feel that I'll be the happiest from attaining some uh, permanent position or as much as possible to make a stand here in the material world and gain some sense of accomplishment, Uh, rajas. And in sattva gun, I may have a sense of peace in atma tattva gyan, uh, focusing on the self, and so forth. However, uh, these types of uh, absorption are not satisfactory. They don't bring us happiness, ultimately. As Krishna explains uh, very helpfully in the Bhagavad Gita, for instance, uh, when we try to pursue happiness in the mode of passion, it seems like a good idea. It seemed like a good idea at the time, right? I thought it was a good idea. But then in the end, in the end, that's like, why did I get uh, bitten at the end? Uh, nectar in the beginning, poison in the end. And so uh, that's good information. To, to know, to carry around with one. 
of simile, one might understand that uh, a sense of dejection and no impetus to do anything in life and trying to drown out one's sorrows through intoxication would be listed under the category of ignorance. And by hearing spiritual knowledge, we can come to understand that the various ways in which I'm endeavoring in the world uh, have predictable results. There's only three modes. Of course, they mix together in different combinations and permutations, but the result's always predictable. We're in a closed system here in the material world, and therefore, the same things are happening over and over again. That's why Prahlad Maharaj pronounced, punak punas charvita charvananam. You've done it before, many times, innumerable times, and you're getting the same result over and over again, but still, you don't see that it didn't, it came to not, N-A-U-G-H-T. Therefore, when we get information from outside the closed system of the material world, uh, then we can learn how to focus our attention in such a way that we attain the ultimate good. As I mentioned, there are parallel verses to this in the Bhagavatam. For instance, in the first canto, second chapter of the Bhagavatam, we hear Sutta Goswami say, Bejure Muneyo Tagre Bhagavan Tamad Hoksajam Satvam Bishudam Shemaya Kalpante Ye Nutaniha which means that previously all the liberated great souls focused their attention and their worship on Narayan, on the Lord who is beyond the modes of material nature. And they attained the highest benefit from doing that because they knew they would attain the highest benefit from focusing their attention on Narayan because he's beyond the modes of nature. As I mentioned in the Sri Shapanishad, they already worked it out. It's already worked out for us, uh, that the, the, the Sri Shapanishad says, Anyare hor sambhavad, anyare hor sambhavad, iti shu shu madhiranam yena stabhiti chakshari. The dhiras, those who are sober and have taken time to figure it out, uh, have already told us that the material world is a colossal hoax, and uh, Prabhupada's words, and that there's another place to focus our attention where we'll attain the ultimate benefit. So, Bejure, Muneyo Tagre, the Munis Tagre previously gave their uh, worship to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who's above the three modes of material nature. Bhagavan Tama Toksajam, he's a Toksaja, he's not part of the material world. Satvam Bishudham Shemaya, Shemaya means they'll attain the highest benefit. Kalpante Yinutaniha. This is of interest to us because the verse states that these sages attain the highest benefit by Bijure, by worshipping the Supreme Personality of God at beyond the modes of material nature. And, wait for it, we can also attain the highest benefit by following in their footsteps. You don't have to be a great sage. You don't have to be Dhira necessarily, but if you ascertain that somebody has figured it out and you don't just push aside through blind doubt and say that uh, nobody can know, which is idiocy, then uh, you can say, all right, I'll follow the sages. Kalpante ye nutaniha, which means that you get the same result just by following them. Another example of this idea is given in the 10th canto, second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam in which the demigods are praying to Lord Krishna within the womb, and they say, Twayam mujaksha kila sattvadami samadhi na veshita cheta saike Twatpara potena mahat kritena kurvanti govatsa padam bhavabdim And in this verse, uh, the demigods say, Twayam mujaksha kila sattvadami uh, That the Supreme Personality of God, it is, uh, his, um, he's, he's very beautiful, uh, load his side. If anybody ever sees uh, a deity with lotus eyes, it captures the attention. You look and then you look again and say, wait a minute, who is that? And for instance, here you can come and sit down and look at the deities, take the day off, and come here and just sit in the temple room. I see around the world very pious souls come in, for instance. I noticed one day when I was in the, uh, Chicago, uh, there are uh, business people they, they come in the temple room early in the morning before they go to work. They're in their work clothes. 
And they just sit down. And they just look at Kishore Kishore. They just sit there and I'm thinking, who are these people that know to come here and just look at the Lord? That's their attempt. They just sit. They're not even chanting, but they're just looking. And uh, Kishore Kishore didn't seem to mind. They just <laughs> stay there. And it's like, yeah, this you're doing the right thing. Toyam Bhujaksha Kila Sattvadami, because the, the demigods say that actually uh, the Lord is uh, the the reservoir of all beauty, all opulence, everything we're looking for uh, comes from the lotus feet of the Lord. He's there complete. Samadhi na veshi to saike. So the admonition is that uh, be in samadhi. Be fully absorbed. Don't worry, you have full permission. Take the day off. Take your life off. Sarvadharma paritya Krishna says, I give you permission. You want to call in sick like Sanat and Goswami and say, that's it. I'll just take my life off and I'll just concentrate on Krishna. Everyone calls him, where is he? He's in the temple. He's sitting there looking at the deities. Can he do that? Yeah, it's there. It's it right. It's in the, the legal literature. Sarvadharma He's just following the thing. Nobody can stop him. So, samadhi na veshi to saike means uh, with one pointed attention. One can give one's gaze to the Lord. One can give, offer one's heart to the Lord. And everyone else will be satisfied because he's the root of everyone. So watering the root of the tree, all the leaves and branches become nourished and satisfied. Samadhi na veshi chait to saike. Pada potena mahat kritena means there are people you can follow. They're mahat kritena. They're doing something. They're refining themselves. They're walking in the world in this way that Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita as an example. Brahman nyadaya karmani sangam tyakpa kurotiya lipitena sapapena padma patram ivambasa. Krishna says, I live like a lotus. Lotus is padmaja. It grows out of the mud, it's in the water, it's in the muck, but it never gets touched. Why? Because the intention is different in the heart. Brahman yadaya karmi sangam tyakva karotiya. The person says, I'm offering everything to Krishna. And therefore, lipite nasapapina, the person is not besmirched. Does anybody know what that means? Even if you don't, it doesn't sound good, doesn't it? <laughs> How you doing? A little besmirched. <laughs> it means to get smeared with something. You know, you put on your best dhoti, sari, you walk into the program, you brush up against some of those stargazer flowers with the little yellow things on it, and you, somebody says, hey, what happened to your brand new? Ah, besmirched. You get smeared by the material energy. So if you don't want to get smeared or besmirched, Krishna says, then uh, in your heart, just offer everything to Krishna. And say, no mas, I'm not interested in keeping anything for myself. I'm a bank teller. Bank teller counts millions of dollars every day, doesn't touch it one penny. Just keeps honest and, and just, I'm doing my job here. So Krishna says, you can live like that, you'll be satisfied. So, Tvatpada Potena Mahakritena, there are great souls, say the demigods, they're already in this mindset, they're already worshipping Krishna. And Tvatpada Potena Mahakritena Kurvantiko Batsapadam Vabhabdin means that if you emulate them, if you follow in their footsteps, which is easy because the great souls are very thoughtful, uh, they think of a means by which they can live their life every day. They organized all of their activities, whatever it may be, around the principle of thinking of Krishna. Kurvan nirantaram karma loko yanam manavartate tenaiva karmana dhyayam mam param bhaktamichiti. Krishna tells Brahma in the Brahma Sanghita, in a very uh, lovely section where uh, Krishna is um, uh, very lovingly talking to Brahma and telling him the secrets of the material world and how to avoid getting entangled and how Brahma can do his work. And at the end, he even shakes his hand, which is very nice. It could have been this, because Krishna's cool. And hence, this is where it, there's got to be an origin to everything. No one, no one said that he didn't do this to Brahma. And, and he says, uh, if you're working, and everybody has to work, kurvan nirantaram karma, everyone's working all the time, working, working, working. Kurvan nirantaram karma, loko yamanavartate tenaiva. 
karmana dhyayam, if you meditate on me through your work even, he said, you'll become liberated. Just think of me. So for all the people of the world, kurvanti if you find out where is the mahat kirtena, where's the great soul who not only took up a process through which his or her life could be organized towards going back home, back to Godhead, but then codified it so everybody else could follow it. That's what great souls do. If you find that, then you're the luckiest person. And you want to know why? why? Only Nirkula wants to know. Everybody else, cover your ears. Okay. Because when you follow the Mahat Kritena, the great souls who have organized the system so that uh, everyone else can have a chance to go back to Godhead, then the ocean of material life shrinks. Tell me when to stop. Keep, should I keep going? Smaller? Come on. Help me out now. Is this small enough? Not, that's a big calf. Come on. There. We'll settle on this. How about that? So, Govatsapadam, a little calf. He walks through the mud. He puts his little hoof. A little water gets in there. And then there it is. What is it? Oh, just step over it. It's cute. It's, it's, and it's not a big deal. And that's what happens, say the uh, demigods, that if you follow the great souls, if you just approach the process, then the ocean of material existence shrinks to the size of the water contained within a hoof print of the calf, and you can easily step over it because of the process given by uh, the previous acharyas. So... Uh, Tasmari kena manasa bhagavan sattvatam bhati shrotavya kirti tavyasya dhyayam pujas tanitida. This is the conclusion. Uh, Tasmat means therefore. Tasmari kena manasa. In the very beginning of Bhagavatam, we get the, the whole conclusion of Bhagavatam. Therefore, Tasmat e kena, one point of attention, put your mind on what? Tasmat e kena manasa bhagavan sattvatam bhati. The, the Lord of the devotees, Krishna. Shrotavya kirtitavyasya deyam pujas nityada. Just do hearing. Shravanam kirtanam. And just do worship. Shrotavya kirtitav. Then you can chant. Deyam, meditate. Pujas, do your puja. Nityada, just do that. And then you'll be able to easily cross beyond the ocean of material existence. There's so much in this purport, but we're running short on time. And I'd like to have a, a meaningful conversation here in this assembly. So now, uh, if you'd be so kind, there's a couple of options. You can make reflections, anything you heard from the purport that you'd like to unearth so we can discuss it. Or anything you heard from the monologue that you thought should be expanded, or a highly relevant question that relates to the subject matter. That's the hardest. If you can ask a relevant question that helps the conversation, then you get 20 points. Everything else, 15 or 10. Okay. <laughs> Hare Krishna. It seems like in the part board, Prabhupada twice mentioned some line paraphrasing that Narayan is transcendental beyond the three modes. And again, he put it in a different sentence. But in 1041 Bhagavad Gita, we understand, or what I understand, transcendental is God beyond the nature, correct? But that's half of the sloka. The immense is God also in the nature. How come we cannot focus on that? That's where we are. So my question to you then. We can. We can focus on the nature. And this is one of the uh, teachings actually that we're hearing here and it's one of the ways in which Shukadeva Goswami begins teaching Parikshit Maharaj. He says, look around and see how everything's, re everything's the body of the Lord. This is the, uh, the concept of Virata Rupa. Ritirtam ya pratieta na pratieta chatmani tad vidyada mano mayam yatabhaso yatata maha. Krishna in his essential teachings on the Bhagavatam tells Brahma that if you see anything in this world separate from me, 
That's illusion. Because there is nothing separate from Krishna. And Bhagavatam confirms that if you see anything separate from Krishna, then you'll live in, a, in fear. Bhayam dvitiya bini beshe tasyad ishar ape tasya viparya yosmiti. This is the definition of the whole problem of, uh, that one might have, that one will have, uh, living in the material world, and that is bhayam syat. Fear arises when I forget that everything's Krishna. Uh, every part of the material creation is, is Krishna. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna um, gives us some ways to meditate upon him in nature, like bijamam sarva bhutanam vidi parta sanatanam bhutir budiman tamasmi tejas tejas vinamaham Punyoganda pratibhyam cha tejas chasmi vibhavaso jivanam sava bhuteshu tapas tapas chasmi tapasvishu Thank you, Prabhu. The, these are samples that he gives in the seventh chapter in which he says, I'm a seed. You can look out if you're growing seeds, you see a seed anywhere, bijamam sava bhutanam bidi parta sanatanam Budhir Budimanta, I'm the intelligence. You can notice that. It's material nature. Tejas, Tejas Vinamaham, I'm the the glowing light of the fire, the power of the fire and so forth. And Punyo Ganda, the from the earth. You know that smell that you get after what, the first rain of the season? You smell the earth. So it's like, what is that? It's Krishna. In Hawaii the boys were going to the beach. And they felt guilty. I think Prabhupada told them they, sh they should go take a dip. And then they came back and said, but Prabhupada, the, I think it's, we might fall into Maya, uh, going to the ocean. And Prabhupada said, Krishna's the light of the sun. He says he's the ocean. How could you fall in Maya? He's there all the time. And so in this verse, uh, Prabhupada mentions, you can fall into Maya. Uh, we're marginal and therefore, we can, we can remember that at any time, if we slip into the conception that this is for me, this is for my enjoyment, and we're not connecting material nature with Krishna, and the best way to connect anything with Krishna, Brahmarpanam Brahmahavir, Brahmatnao Brahmanohutam, Brahmaiva, Tinagantavya, Brahmakarma Samarina, is to use it in his service. Uh, Prabhupada gave the example of the tiny screw. If you find a tiny little screw somewhere, you might feel sorry for it. I know I found one once when I was walking and I stepped on something a little hard and I looked and I reached down and I picked it up and brushed it off. It was a tiny little screw and I was thinking, what happened to you? You had uh, some glory days. You were, you were connected somewhere and doing a big part holding something together, and then you fell out. And now you are lying in the, in the dirt. And then I looked at myself, and I was thinking, yeah, that's me. Tiny little screw, no connection to, the, to Krishna. So I, I kept that screw, and I brought it home, and I have it on my desk to remind me. So in seeing the material nature, when we have a clear conception that these are um, Krishna's energies, it's not only fascinating, <laughs> but also edifying to, to remember when you're around devotees who are looking at the world in relationship to Krishna. Like on, on Gora Purnima, Prabhupada gives a lecture, and the main verse that he quotes is Rasoham Apsakonteya. Have you heard this? This is a lecture of Prabhupada's uh, on Gaur Purnima Day, and he quotes, Rasoham Apsikonteya Prabhasmi Shashi Shuri Yuyo. Pranabhaksava Bede Shu Shabdeke Parushamna Shu. So this verse, Krishna saying, I'm the taste in water. And Prabhupada saying, this is so simple. If you remember when you t drink water, that this is quenching my thirst, only Krishna can do this. This is Krishna's mercy. And to do that, he said, even if you are addicted to drinking wine, you can drink wine and think this taste comes from Krishna. This taste is Krishna. And that, then you'll become Krishna conscious as well. Good, right, Parm? 
<laughs> He's laughing. Okay. Okay, relevant questions and reflections that will augment the conversation. One, two, and then we'll come over here. Prabhu, right behind. Very nice. Why um, distress touch the great souls? Distress. Why does distress touch the great or, souls? Or come to the great souls, meet with the great souls? For various reasons. Sometimes it's didactic. Uh, for instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna becomes distressed. Prophet mentions that this is to show us what to do when you're in distress. You turn to your guru and say, what do I do now? And we see that Vyasadeva was in distress. He was doing a service, but he wasn't satisfied. So in distress, he turned to his guru, Narada. And we'll, we'll find throughout the Shastra that there are various situations in which great souls come into distress uh, because of not uh, having, as they feel, completed their devotional practice. And Judas is another example, after the battle of Kurukshetra, he was disconsolate. And that was so that Krishna could take him to Bhishma um, and have Bhishma instruct him in the ways of the material nature and how to navigate it. So that's one of the reasons that great souls have become distressed. Another reason that they become distressed is because they're very compassionate. They're paradhukaduki. It, if uh, we feel, it's very dangerous to feel because there's, there are so many reversals of fortune in this world and if we have a soft heart, we'll feel very deeply the suffering of others. And the great souls feel the suffering of others. And because of that, they, their heart aches so much so that they work tirelessly to try to make sure that other people can uh, come up to the process of Krishna consciousness and, and be benefited. Another reason that great souls feel distress is because they feel they're unworthy. In the list of the symptoms of bhava mentioned by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami, one of the symptoms of bhava is that as a person advances, he or she develops this uh, sense of uh, utter humility in which he or she thinks, uh, I'm unworthy, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm simply a, a, a hindrance to society. Look at Sanatana Goswami, when he came to Puri, he was going through the Jarikanda forest, following the footsteps of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he drank water from anywhere, to, so just to stay alive. And when he got to Puri, he had these sores on his body, and he thought, that I'm a useless person. Now I've come here to Puri, I have these sores on my body, and I might uh, walk near a pujari, might touch them, and I'll create an offense. And then, when he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who insisted on embracing him, and the, the sores, the oozing pus from the sores on his body, would smear the transcendental body of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Sanatana thought, that's it. Uh, I, this, I cannot tolerate this. I'm going to commit suicide. He thought it in his mind that when I'm present with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at the Rath I'll throw myself under the wheel and endless useless existence in this body. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to visit Haridas Thakur's Bhajan Kutir and Sanatana Goswami was there and preemptively, without him being told, he said, I don't approve this suicide idea. <laughs> but he was in anxiety. So Prabhupada once said in response to devotees, who said, a devotee who said that Prabhupada devotees get an anxiety about book distribution. Like how to, how am I going to do it? How am I going to increase book distribution? So forth. And Prabhupada very uh, animatedly said, uh, tell them that is transcendental anxiety. Thinking about how to increase one's service. We end at nine, right? Is it normal or we end now? Okay, uh, yes. We need the microphone on the other side of the room, right under the Anadhan Sponsor the Sunday Feast sign, just to the right. First of all, thank you, Prabhu, for you and Nirkula for coming here and giving the association to us. 
Thank you. Thanks for having me. So in your monologue, you mentioned that there's those great souls who decode uh, the scriptures, let's say, okay, the message, uh, for the rest, to, for others to follow more easily. So there are some are, who may not be able to follow uh, or feel they can't follow, but they, can, they want to serve that person or those individuals. So what is their uh, rate of progression, let's say, to, be, to becoming, be, what, you know, becoming a follower? You understand? Yes. So this is a recommended practice, that if one feels one has no spiritual assets, then find somebody who does have spiritual assets and render some service. Of course, Krishna says it in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadvidi Pranipatina Pripraśnena Sevaya, Upadakshanti De Jnanam, Jnanina Stepadarshina, that find somebody who uh, has realization and then do some service. Sevaya, approach in a humble mood and, and try to ask some questions that are relevant. And Bhagavatam also says, Shushu Sho Shodhana Sivasudeva Kataruchi. That if you serve the great souls, then you're doing the best service. And because of that service, you'll gain affinity for hearing about Krishna just by serving them. So the, the great souls actually are our most valuable asset, sadhu sangha, because bhavad vidha bhagavatas tirta bhuta svayam vibho tirta ku pranti tirtani santak stena gadabhita yudhishthir certified that Vidura was a walking Tirta. Tirta means a bridge, uh, connects you to somewhere else, connects you to the spiritual world. Because he said you carry the personality of God within your heart. So anyone who comes in contact with pure devotees, especially through service, intentional service, then will gain the same asset that, that, that the person has. This is the primary way, says Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that one advances in Krishna Bhakti. Krishna Bhakti, Sadhu Sangha, Mool. He said it's the Mool, or the root of, of Krishna Bhakti, to serve the great devotees. And incidentally, out of 64 items of devotional service, there are five that are particularly potent, that even if you don't have faith in them, but if you're not offensive, and you have a little contact with them, then you'll still be successful in devotional service, and one of them is sadhu sangha. So just a respectful mood and trying to do something for the, for the sadhus, this is the essence of devotional service. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Right over here on this side. You can keep your hand up. Prabhu Govinda does everything. He's like uh, Ananta Shesha. <laughs> Hi Krishna, thank Hi you Krishna. so much for your lecture. Um, the question that I had was that just across yesterday's lecture and this morning's, uh, you know, I've been hearing the theme of, of free will and, and choice and really being intentional to connect everything back to Krishna. Um, in my experience, that needs to be almost a moment-to-moment -moment process. Um, and, my, and you know, you, you were talking about how we are marginal energy and how we can so easily kind of slip when we um, start to frame things through, oh, this is for my enjoyment, for my pleasure. So my question is, um, how can we kind of develop the habit of moment to moment connecting everything back to Krishna and, and framing things for his pleasure um, in a way that is full of feeling and, and enthusiasm and not mechanically. Um, how can we find that balance? One way that I've found is through association. Whomever we associate with will develop, well, let me put it uh, in English in a better way. When we associate with someone who has this spontaneous quality or who's, what we should say, attached to Krishna, then we'll start to develop a similar attachment. When we associate with those who are attached to matter, say the Shastra, then we'll also develop a sense of optimism that maybe I can make it here too in the material world. So 
we should very deliberately associate with those who are advanced in devotional service. As uh, uh, Rupa Goswami says, Krishneti yasa giditam manasadriyeta dikshasti chet pranatibhishya pachantamisham shushushaya pachanam nindari shunya hridam ipsita sangalabhya. Sorry. He says, uh, he mentions the gradations of, of devotees and then he says, Nindari shunya hridam ipsita sangalabhya. Sangalabhya, you should gain the association of those who, uh, they're, they're definitely, you can see, they don't have an interest in the material world anymore. They've lost the, the, the uh, propensity to criticize others. Nindari shunya, they're purified of that. That's rare. Somebody's not envious anymore because they're already fulfilled. Nindari shunya hridam ipsita. If you can find somebody who's really advanced and steady in devotional service, then Rupa Goswami says, be there. Just be there. Listen. Serve. Do something that then uh, it'll rub off on you. And that's our whole process. I was thinking this morning when we were driving in from Mangal Artik, that who made all this? It, it really emanated from Srila Prabhupada's heart. All these uh, centers around the world because he had that spiritual potency and therefore he was able to establish these tirtas everywhere. Uh, the deities appeared, all the devotees came. So if we take advantage of advanced association as much as possible. Also, it, uh, it's helpful, I find, uh, to be uh, in a position to be chastised. Has anybody ever chastised you? And didn't you feel humble right afterwards? Like, yeah, I am. No. <laughs> Sometimes, it, like, if somebody uh, corrects you, of course, we should be ready, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, to take such instruction. And that's helpful also. I had one other thought when you were asking the question, but it escapes me now, so I'll probably remember it tomorrow. Or right after I say the class is over. And it is. So thank you very much everyone for attending Vajra Kalpa Rusha Kripa Sindhave Vichat Patika Nam Pabla Yo Vaishnavi Bio Namonama Nanta Koti Vaishnavini Ki Jai Go Pray Varande Nitai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bo Nitai Gora Hari Bo Nitai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bon Nich Tai Gora Hari Bon. There will be some more kata at Tejas Vini's house, 6 o'clock Tuesday. 6 p.m. Tuesday, there'll be some prashadam, and Vaish will be giving the class. <laughs>